In this video, we're going to talk about one of the methods for how to solve a system of equations. Now, there are a lot of different methods you could use to solve systems of equations, but here we're going to look specifically at a graphing technique. Now, the vast majority of our exercises that you and I will deal with will be linear equations. So uh, both, all of the equations in your system will just be straight lines. Technically, you could have parabolas or, or other types of curves, but that's, that's somewhat rare. The vast majority will all be linear equations. And also, um, we're going to stick mostly to uh, systems that only have two equations and two variables. Technically you could have three equations or three variables and things like that and we might look at some of those later but again the vast majority that you'll deal with in an algebra class will be only two equations with just like x and y for, for example. So we're going to assume those to be the case at least for this video. So here's how you solve a system by graphing. First thing you do is you graph both of the lines. I'm going to assume you already know how to do that y equals mx plus b, you know, you get your slope and your y-intercept and all those good things, and you graph them both. And then the second thing, to get the solution, you're just going to look to see where these lines intersect. So if this is one the, a graph for one equation of a line, and this is the graph for another equation of a line, then th think about what that means for a second. Uh, all these yellow dots that I'm putting on your line right now, every one of those those ordered pairs would make the blue equation be true if you plugged in that x y ordered pair but for most of these yellow dots they do not also make the green equation true so if you look at these pink dots I'm doing right here the location of all the pink dots those ordered pairs would make all of the green equation uh, would make the green equation be true but it wouldn't make the other equation be true. There's only one place that I can see that's on both the green line and the blue line because that has to happen. It has to be uh, a solution to both of the equations in the system and I think that would actually be right about here. So that's where we find out where they intersect and so if you can see that on a graph that'll probably be your solution. Uh, now I, I should probably put a number three in here now that I think about it. The last thing you want to do is when you when you look on a graph, graphs can be deceiving because you know if you're like me, if your lines aren't all perfect and straight and, and all those good things, uh, you, you may think you have the right intersection point, but if your graph's off, it may not be correct. So what you should do at the end is actually take that ordered pair and plug it back into all of the equations in your system and just make sure that they all turn out to be true. All right, so that's how we solve by graphing. Let's let's try an example. Let's let's see how we do with this. All right, so here's an example. It says solve the system y equals x minus 5 and 2x plus y equals 4. Now, now notice, especially for the second equation, it's not in slope-intercept form, so you might need to rewrite that. So like y equals negative 2x plus 4. So now I have two linear equations, both in slope-intercept form. I'm going to go through this kind of quickly. You could graph both of these, um, because especially with this pen, my lines almost certainly would not be straight and nice. So I went ahead and just drew them with a little line tool just to save a little time. So just for, for reference here, the yellow equation is the first one, and then the pink equation is the second one. So here's y equals x minus 5, and then here's y equals negative 2x plus 4. And so you can check me on those, but I think, think they're pretty close to correct. And then I see exactly where they intersect. They intersect right about here. Okay, right where that green circle is. And if I had to just guess what order pair that is, I know my graph's not perfect, but I'm thinking maybe like 3, 1, 2, 3 for x, negative 2 for y, something like that. So I think this would be the solution to the system, meaning it should make both the first equation true and the second equation true. Let's try it out. Let's see, if 3 is x and negative 2 is y, 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Looking, looking good. Let's try the second equation. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 
2 is 4. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So yes, this is in fact the solution to the system. And again, we found that by graphing both of the lines and then simply seeing where they intersect. Now that seemed pretty easy. Now why don't we always do that? Why do I even have to talk about other methods if, if that works so well? Well, I mean, let's, let's be honest here for a minute. First of all, that, first off, that, that took a while to graph all those by hand and a lot of space and things like that. And uh, another issue might be if this did not cross at an integer value of 3 comma negative 2, integer for x and integer for y, I wouldn't be able to tell you where it was. If it was 3.087 comma negative 2.145. I can't see that with my eyes. That would be impossible. So if it's uh, more, more detailed than just integer values, you probably want to use another method. Uh, another downside, another reason you might not want to use a graphing method is let's say the intersection point is way away from the origin, like 105 comma 47. Your scale for your graph would have to be so, so big that it would make it hard to pinpoint exactly is that 45 or is that 44 or 47. You know, you, you wouldn't be able to tell very easily the X and Y values if the scale got too, too big. So uh, there's pros and cons. It's, it's good, uh, it's a simple method, but um, we also need to go look at some other methods, which we'll do right now. If you hang on with us, we'll look at substitution coming up next.